welcome. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I am going to share with you Bilbo's Cat Chakra Cleanse. So let me explain a little bit about what that is before I get into it. So I am a holistic cat therapist. For those of you that are perhaps new to the Naturally Cats community, I help people reconnect with their cats and to understand what's going on with them. So I use a variety of tools and services, but primarily cat chakra cleanses uh, is my um, my go to. So I have clients who have been really brave in giving me permission to share their cat's chakra cleanses, because I'll be honest with you, it's a very personal experience. It's a very personal experience when I'm working with the cat and I spend an hour, usually two uh, shifting their energy, using crystals, color, sound, light, whatever tools they need. Very personal connection when I work with them one-to-one. -one. And then when I give the feedback to the guardian, there's another, another level of healing that happens, both for the human and for the cat. And to share it online, it's really... It's, it's, I've, I've come to realize it's another level of healing. So it's like three for the price of one <laughs> almost. And what happens with, you know, being able to share it online is that you guys get to understand what a chakra cleanse is. So what does the cat experience? And I'll tell you, it's different for every cat. Um, my T-shirt's wonky. So the ones I've done like this week, you know, I've had one who shared a soul name with me which I've never ever had hi Max hi one and a half um hi Emma uh, hi Laura uh, Lorna so um sorry my love yeah that was that was amazing and I'm hopeful that the Guardian will give me permission to share it with you um I've had another that I'll be sharing next week who used color cards to shift their energy and they you know they don't have an eye like oh it's just it's fascinating so Thank you to the guardians, for those that I've shared so far and those that have given me permission to do so. So tonight we are sharing Bilbo's story. And let me just, first of all, find the reason why uh, his guardian, Lorna, not Laura, Lorna, wanted to come and work with me. Um, because I think the more I've been doing these, I think it's important for people to understand, like, why? Why do people come and have this done for their cats? One and a half eyes, she's next week. Yeah, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait to share it as well. Um, Erin, really glad you're here. So let me just find Lorna's so I can say to you. So after the end of every session, I give the guardians the Zoom link and a written report, and I ask them to complete a feedback form. So that's not just about my services. I am, <laughs> I'm a perfectionist at heart, so I'm always looking for ways to improve my offerings. It's also about having the Guardian cement and reaffirm what they've taken away, what they've experienced from the chakra cleanse. And one of the questions that I ask is, um, you know, what what has changed uh, as a result? Like what has changed in your, with your relationship with your cat? And I'll come to that at the end when I've shared with you the cleanse. But what happens when somebody comes to work with me? I ask them to complete a short consultation form. So a lot of the work that I do with cats, it's from sensing and feeling. I feel it in my body because I'm an empath. I feel it, sense it, shift it in myself for the cat. But that doesn't mean that I'm not a professional. So I still want to understand what's going on with the cat. And I actually don't read the intake form fully until the end because I don't want my head and my logical brain, the ego part of my brain, to start to find answers or to... Um, you know, logic things out. So I read a couple of the questions in particular, which I'm not going to go into detail now, but one of them is about the intention for the energy work. So the intention that Lorna set for Bilbo was, she said, and let me read her words so it's not filtered from me. She said, I intend to hear Bilbo's voice and stop forcing, stop forcing my love onto him when sometimes it's probably a bit suffocating for him. Now, let me explain a bit about that. So we all love our cats like so, so much. One of the other reasons that Lorna came to me is because Bilbo has had a reoccurring sore on his kind of like his temple, um, which you should have seen. I've put a couple of pictures up um, in on social media. And it was kind of cut on a loop. So it would come. Baby Max. 
being a minx. Um, the sore would come. She was trying to get it treated and get help from the vets. The vets weren't able to really find the cause of it. So Lorna came to me and said, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if there's something to do with this third eye because it's in that kind of vicinity. So we had an intro call. I did a really quick sort of sense with him and said, yeah, I think you're right. So the fascinating thing is, ever since we did the chakra cleanse, which was early in December, he hasn't had, the sore hasn't come back. And I think Lorna mentioned it was on like a, a monthly, like a six weeks, six weekly or, or a cycle and it hasn't come back. And there's also been another fascinating development, which I'll share with you at the end. So let me show you on Facebook a picture of him. So you can see, and I will move my phone Instagram so you can quickly see him too. Because I think it's always important if we're going to work with them again, to some degree, uh, for you to be able to see who they are. Um, what am I doing? Catch up again, 2022. Bilbo, gorgeous boy. Okay. <laughs> I love him. So let me switch this around Instagram. Hang on. Uh, where is the button? There. Okay, and let me just share on Facebook. Wait a minute. You want to share me? Okay. So can you see this gorgeous boy? Look at him. Absolutely beautiful. And look at this. <laughs> Isn't he just a love? Look, look how fluffy. Look how fluffy. <laughs> okay, so let's I'll go let the pussy cat. All right, let me put you back. Instagram, there we go. Bit wonky. I'll stop sharing on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> so that's the gorgeous boy. Now, with a chakra cleanse. There's generally initial impressions that I have at the beginning. So I start to work with the cat and they share with me to start with like how they're feeling. And it kind of um, makes sense as we go through as to what the initial impressions are and how they shift. I know him, right? He's so gorgeous. So whenever I work with a cat to start with, I always ask permission. I can't get Instagram straight again. Always ask permission. Energy work, emotion work, cat comms, whatever it may be, you always ask permission, always. Now with Milo, who I did a, a few months ago, he didn't deny me permission, but he was very clear that he couldn't do it. He couldn't do the whole healing in one go. So it is always important to check in. Okay, so without further ado, he said, hmm. my heart is hers. It's full to bursting for the amount of love I have inside me for her. She has no concept of her power, her grace, her capacity to change others. She is, she is a being of such light and love, but her heart hurts. There are shadows there she thinks she has to hold. The guilt and sadness, it is not for her to keep. If she does, it will consume her, not only dim her light, but extinguish it. I can't let that happen. I was sent to her to keep her light aglow. She has no idea how powerful and important she is. Now, at this point, he shared with me about the fact that she is doing. So Lorna has a separate Instagram page and feel free to drop the, the username in the chat. Uh, Lorna on Instagram she's pet portraits now what you may have seen is that she did one for Leo and of baby Max they were amazing absolutely amazing and with the chakra cleanses sometimes I get words like that download of words other times I get images not very often I get pictures but but mostly it's like a knowing I can't think whether that's Claire not Claire is it Claire sentient I can't think what the formal term is but I just know you know <laughs> You know, you know, Lorna Ashcroft art. Perfect. She popped it in there. Um, and what he shared is that the work that she does creating these portraits 
it's going to be a tool that will help other people grieving other people. So pet parents, cat mums, cat dads, guardians, companions, whatever. So I said to her, you know, have you ever considered that when we were talking, when doing this feedback? And she smiled and said that that is something that's a direction she wants to take it in. So then he said, my heart, it holds the light for her. When she is ready to lean into it, she will shine so brightly. And then he was talking about energy. So he said, I take it from them all. It's my role to transmute it from him, cat dad, from her, cat mum and sister cat. I take it and shed it. I love it. I get to help and heal. It brings me joy to support the others. For mum, she needs compassion for herself. Hang on. She needs to heal her pain, to feel it and let it go. Let it move through her. Her energy is so unsettled and balanced. Her self-care needs to come to the top of her list. She is the glue for us all, but no one can help her but her. Her light needs to shine, her soul to speak, her heart to grow, her power to sparkle. She needs help to heal, to uncover her wounds, to see her pain, face it head on, but to show it love. The hard times are here to help us, to feel, to experience, to be. She is a young soul. I know she feels the pain so very deeply. All her endings, he means like nerve endings, all her endings are heightened. <clears throat> she wants to love and support others, but she needs to know it can't be at the detriment of herself. As she steps into her power, she will need help, love, support. She has this now and will need more. Embracing who she is, is the start. Accepting herself is the key. I mean, how beautiful is that? So we hadn't even started on the chakra cleanse. And he was very, very clear about just how much awareness he had for his cat mum, just how much power she has and what she needs to do to get there. Now, Lorna, like a lot of us, has suffered, has suffered from bereavement of the cat that came before. And like a lot of us, it was really, really hard for her. And I find it fascinating that Bilbo is able to sense and to feel that. And I know, my love, I know. Be brave, because don't forget, like I said, this will hit hard again, hearing it again. But actually, I think it will do you good. So, you know, he's saying to her, like, you've, you can do this, man. Like, you've got this great power, but you've got to let go of the pain that's inside. You know, as humans, we hold so much and we don't need to. That's what he's saying. Okay. Yeah. So dehydrated when I do this energy work, I find it fascinating. And I just thought it was me. And I found something online the other day that said that when you're channeling or working with energy, you can get really dehydrated or have burps. It's like, oh, gross. I don't have burps, but I do get quite, quite dehydrated. I feel my energy moving. Look, my cheeks are red already. So I said to him, are you ready to do the healing now? And he said, no, <laughs> I have more words to share. See, I've got proper energy flow. Bilbo. Oh. Um, do you know what, it's fast. I just turned my heating off as well because I thought I might get a bit warm. Okay, so I said, okay, let's let's go on. So he said, <clears throat> I will help her, guide her, but that is all I am. A mirror for her to see, to feel, to trust, and to be safe. My experiences, myself, it's all for her highest good. It's to help her heal, help her to shine. I am the conduit for her body to pause and her soul to sparkle. She thinks it's about me. She is so wrong. 
it's her. It's all for her. My chance to heal her is my gift. We are connected at our hearts. Mine is brighter now as hers is dimmed. But watch out, world. When we shine bright together, there'll be no stopping us. Okay, now I'm ready to shift. And by that, he meant the energy. So I said to him, where would you like to start? And he said, at my heart, the most important of them all. So when I shared this with Lorna, one of the things she talked to me about was that she has been aware that she needed to change her self-care practices. And she'd also said to me about how Bilbo would like follow her around the house and things. And I said, you know, where he said, um, I'm the conduit for her body to pause and her soul to sparkle. I said, you know, then stop what you're doing, you know, be with him, be present with him, take time to really see him and pause, you know, slow down. So we went to his heart and it felt big and bright, glowing, charged and sharing energy, basically radiating love, light and healing to all around him. He shares his love to all who comes into his orbit. And he said, my heart is my healing tool. To be full, to shine to others, to bring love and to be love. So I said, do you need any healing here? And he said, what do you think? Because sometimes the souls, the, these cats are a bit minxy. And he's like, a bit cheeky. So well, what do you think? And I felt into his chakra and it felt charged and large. It was moving well and it was just beaming light. Um, what he did share is that if he becomes withdrawn, like in his behavior, um, that he, you know, there's a then he, we need to check in with his heart chakra because what it will mean is that he needs some color therapy. He needs a bit of a green green fabric down to support the the shift of energy from his heart. So with Bilbo, his heart is the one chakra that connects them all. Now they are all connected. You know, the, the heart chakra is key because it connects the bottom three and the top three. But let's be honest, I probably said that about all of them, that they are all key in some way or another. For him, if his heart is over or underactive, the rest of his chakras will be out of alignment. Um, where did I get to? Yeah, so his root chakra, excuse me, is the most important to support. So he didn't need, he didn't need anything. You know, I'm not going to do any energy work if he doesn't need it. So... We moved on to his solar plexus, so going down the way, so around the tummy area. And he said that it fluctuates and it depends how much energy he is holding or transmuting. It depends how much he is being around other people or other beings, like not just people, but his sister or, or, or humans. Um, and I asked if he would take himself away sometimes if they've had people to come and stay, you know, and, and, and I said, he's, he's shifting energy. He's taking himself away to move the energy through him. He also shared that small and frequent help by that he meant food. And it said it keeps his digestion moving and maintaining momentum. So the solar plexus is the tummy. It's where all the emotions and power sit. And Lorna said to me, yes, he is felt. It felt he is. He. Ugh. My energy is buzzing. He is fed several meals throughout the day. And I said, you know, keep up with it because those small little meals are helping him to shift the energy and helping him to digest the energy that's moving from his heart down through his solar plexus. Okay, so then he shared that it was the energy in the solar plexus was feeling quite warm. It was moving. It was like a train on its tracks. So like, ch -ch 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 like moving, you know, constantly moving and shifting, which is exactly what you want a chakra to be doing. You need it to be moving. You want the energy to be moving. And then repeat. So I said, do you need any healing here? And he said, continued support with food and time to withdraw. So basically not from me in our session. But I did need to feed back to Lorna that actually what she's doing with regards to his food needs to continue. So little and often because that is helping him to maintain himself energetically. And also that when he takes himself away, he's not being 
excuse me, he's not being um, uh, distant. He's not being um, grumpy or miserable. He is literally trying to shift his own energy. So basically he's healing himself. So continue to let him do it. So then we went down to the root uh, here. You notice that I didn't do the sacral, which is the orange. We went on to the root and he said, she is my root. She grounds me. She connects me. When she feels good, I am grounded. When she is balanced, I feel safe. When she pauses, I can feel the, env uh, when she pauses, I can feel. And by that, he meant the environment around him, the connection between his body and his soul, essentially. So when Lorna is paused and present and grounded, and she's very much a woman who is very active, very busy with a lot of things going on, like a lot of us, but she is particularly kind of full of, full of energy, constantly on the move. When she pauses, I can feel. And I said to her, you know, when you are taking downtime, whatever format that may be, that's when he feels grounded and safe and secure. And again, Lorna shared that, you know, it's something that she's been wanting to do is to, you know, read more, meditate more, take out, take out a bit more downtime, essentially. So he said, her balance affects us all. It means everybody in the home but no one more than me. I can see and feel when she is off or out of alignment. She needs to find a routine, a ritual, to give herself compassion and priority. When she is still, and by that he means her soul, I can be. So the energy here felt small and it was sort of flickering like on, on and off, you know, like sort of pulsing type thing. Um, and he did share about using color therapy. So I said that when, you know, with the chakra cleanse, you get uh, in the report, you get a section called additional recommendations, which are basically the actions, the follow up actions for the humans to do. So I mentioned about, you know, using red color therapy and having it somewhere so that he can use it if he needs to. He also basically said that when he's on the red, she needs to look and notice so that when he's sat there, she needs to take time out. She needs to pause. So it's a way for him to, to show her what she needs to do, if that makes sense. So he also shared with me like a piece of jewellery. And I said to her about getting um, something that would anchor her with him. So like a ring or something to remind her to pause and to catch her breath. No, I can't remember. So it's beginning of December. If Lorna said to me she just bought jewelry or had said to her husband about buying a jewelry, can't remember. But basically, I said you need to get some jewelry to remind you to anchor yourself. So then he let out a big sigh, and um, I could feel that the chakra was a little bigger. Oh, and he said about how he can feel when. Lorna is on high alert so when she is very buzzed and you know what the hell is going on quite stressed essentially in terms of you know human speak he can feel it so she needs to find a way to kind of find a bit of equilibrium find a bit of balance so I shared with her my technique called the calm connections so basically you close your eyes you put your hand on your heart you take a deep breath in put your other hand on your tummy or your solar plexus below which is below your belly button take another deep breath and then you just basically take a third deep breath with your hands on your body and it's nice and slow and it can take less than a minute, but it helps to calm and soothe you and to bring your nervous system back into alignment. Mm. Okay. So then we went up, we went up, back up the chakras. Oops, back up the chakras. Hang on. Stop the squash up. God, I mean, I'm going to be weeing all night now. So um, basically, the th the throat and third eye, he they were blocked, and he said they're blocked because of her. Now, in all the chakra cleanses that I've done, never have I ever, never have I ever, that game, had a cat that has judged 
or berated or been angry with their guardian. So yes, he shared here something that is potentially a little sharp to hear. But when I actually had the intro call with Lorna, she said to me, I think, you know, I think I need to do some work on myself. I think I'm impacting the third eye chakra between the two of us, which is true, which is what he said. Cats will always share what they need, but it's never like judgment is human. You know, it's not a cat thing. And he said her truth, her purpose, she is in denial and also afraid afraid of the right thing to do, the right action to take. She, tr she tries to logic out all the actions, but that keeps her in her head. She needs, for all of us, to come into and be led by her heart. Feel the pain, play the sadness, fill it with love, lead from her heart, shine. So this was this was as Lorna expected, you know, and she said to me about this previous cat that she was carrying a lot of grief, a lot of pain. Um, and with the third eye for humans, it's linked to our intuition with cats. It's very much linked to their sole purpose to be with us, their mission with the humans. And, you know, Bilbo had said about how his mission is love his mission is to shift energy his mission is to bring joy and when we regardless of whether we talk about it every day or show it every day when we have grief in our hearts like don't get me wrong peeps it never just goes you don't ever heal from it it's not like a condition but if you hold on to it so tightly and don't change it 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 can be consuming and it can evolve into something heavy and dense that you put in a box and don't go to deal with again so for him like for Bilbo he's not saying like god oh, she's wrong it's her fault what he's saying is you know you've got to feel the pain mum you know clear the sadness that you've got fill it with love and you will be better I will be better essentially so I said to him like what can she do to help you because you know there are some humans who want just the practical things. You know, one of them right here, whenever I work with my boys, like it's lovely to hear the words, but there is a part of me that's like, well, what can I do? And I said to you all before, like, what are the things? What's the stuff? You know, when Leo said to me a couple of months ago when I was going through all this divorce and things and he was like, you know, just, just let me feel it, mum. I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's so hard let him feel the sadness that he's going through you know he's my baby I don't want him to feel that I want to take that away so that he's not hurting I don't want to take it away because I don't want him to have it I just don't like the thought of him hurting and, and being in pain but that's the lesson right the lesson <laughs> uh, Erin said practical things like yeah I know <laughs> with you um you do make me I did think of you and I was saying it as well um that was the lesson from Leo at the time when he did the weeing in the house and I did a communication with him and that's what he told me that was the lesson you have to let me feel it mum so with the, they are the messages that they have to share with us come from their soul to ours and there are like so many human filters that have to be bypassed before we get the goddamn message and that's what my job is that's what I do I give you their words and I help you to understand what it means and how you can use it to to make things different you know I hope that makes sense so I said what can she do to help you and he said take steps Speak up, take time to heal. <laughs> Erin, I hope you listen to this bit. It's not the things to do, it's the how to be. Sounds like Leo. What to feel. All the time she is shut down, afraid, hiding from her, emo from her emotions, the more stagnant we become. 
the saw on his temple the saw is to help her see she needs the proof the physical reminder to come out of her head to come into her heart to heal to be so i said to him yeah yeah um what can i do for you now you know so i i asked if there's anything i could do like to do uh, to heal him and he chose a turquoise crystal which i to be honest with you is not what I'm, i use very often i'd have to google it um but basically he wanted lorna to get a piece of turquoise to wear it and to use it and when we had this call she told me that turquoise was her favorite crystal and she does have it in jewelry but she didn't have any on so i was like right well there we go get some of that missy get it on um so the throat felt big but blocked and that was because he said it's ready to come out and to be balanced um and the third eye was small and shadowy uh not trusting for it to shine so the difference between the two is like you know and they're both linked to Lorna is about speaking up and saying vocalizing her sadness and the pain and what happened with the cat before and then using that emotion and that circumstance that experience that grief excuse me to where do you get the breaths to use it with people to use these portraits to help them grieve to help them shift to help them feel what's going on with them okay then we went up to the crown and he said when we are one we shine the the chakra was bold and bright shining beautifully um now the crown is about for cats it's about like their connection to about for all of us connection to to the divine to the universe god spirit whatever version of words you want to use for that the thing that's bigger than us um now the third eye is the usually to do with the cat's mission with the human to so their sole purpose um and the crown is about like the being that they are and how they do that kind of thing so like for Bilbo, he's very clear on why he's here. Like, like we did with Milo, very clear on why they're with their guardians, the lessons that they've got to share. And he said that he is ready for the journey. He's ready to do whatever he needs to do for Lorna. There was lots and lots of purple in his aura, which is all the crown. So lovely and beautiful, expanding and protecting his aura and in his chakras. Um, and he said, I need her to see. And he means with the third eye. To be is to thrive, to do, to do is to die. I don't remember that bit. We are light. We are destined to shine. I await for her action. She can believe in herself as I do. She is ready. Her time is now. It is okay to heal. It is okay to let go, mum. I am here. We are together. Let the next chapter begin. You are love. We are connected. Our journey eventful and precious. And that was it. So then I disconnected from him, obviously thanked him for the session, made sure that he was grounded and that all of his chakras were protected. And it was really beautiful because we didn't use a lot of things like with Bilbo he didn't need crystal for every chakra or, or a color for every chakra he was able to share what Lorna can do to help but in this instance by being able to share his words he shifted he shifted his own energy oh, max on fluff on the face he shifted his own energy by being able to get the message to her and when Lorna, the session, this is what she said, shared, shared with me, words. Um, yep. 
So I said, what was the best part of you? What was the best part for you of working with Naturally Cats? She said, hearing the words that my boy needed to say to me, it has shifted so much within me and I feel a very deep connection to him now. And I said, what changes have you noticed in the relationship with your cat? She said, our connection feels even stronger and I have a greater understanding of why he's in my life and that's to bring me joy. I'm enjoying every moment with him. Now, the beautiful thing is, um, Lorna messaged me, I don't know, a couple of weeks later, and um, it reminds me, I haven't put the photo up of Ivy and her roses from last week. Let me find a post and put that up. Naughty, naughty. Um, Lorna sent me a little video <laughs> of Bilbo, and you know how everybody calls it different things. Some people call it making biscuits. We call it padding down in our house. But when the cats will, whatever you call it, pad down, make biscuits, you know, on a blankie or whatever. Um, Bilbo did it, I think, and I think it was the first time. She always wondered why he didn't do it. And the noise that he makes <laughs> when he's doing it is phenomenal. <laughs> And the look of contentment on his face is just the most beautiful experience. So I will post that. Lorna's given me permission to share it with you all. And she said to me, like, he's been doing this since the chakra cleanse. Now, if you understand the behavior of the, the, of the reason why cats do this, the bit, that doesn't make good English. The reason why cats do this behavior is comes from when they were kittens and they would do it to get the milk going from their mum when that obviously would happen they're feeding and they're happy so it releases all the beautiful happy hormones in their head so when cats do it as they're older they do it as a sign of comfort and pleasure and it makes them feel nice so I don't think it's any form of coincidence that he didn't do it before and then since he had the chakra cleanse apparently he does it a lot and she loves it like oh, I would too Leah did it today I meditated on the bed I'll pop a picture up tomorrow or the next day maybe the weekend and uh I got my really fleecy blanket on the bed um and he went all the way around doing it it was brilliant and the noise just slush like super loud purr so with Bilbo it wasn't about shifting trauma which I've I've had this week it wasn't about particularly blocked energy in terms of stagnant dense energy like there was an energy blockage don't get me wrong but I think it was fascinating where he said that he needed to have the saw for her to see you know and if you think about the kind of the theme of Bilbo chakra cleanse it's all about Lorna <laughs> which you know, it's not uncommon with the work that I do with the cats. They generally need, which is why my hashtag is giving cats a voice. And actually, it's only really now starting to kind of come into its own. The more I'm sharing what they have to say. Like with Mark, with Leo, you know, when I shared his um, lessons from Leo this week, I couldn't do longer than 10 minutes. But they are souls in, an, in a four, three-legged furry maybe not furry body you know and they have every right to be heard just like we do every right so I hope that you've enjoyed hearing about Bilbo hi Mindy no worries you can watch it later it'll be on replay hopefully if it saves I hope you've enjoyed hearing about Bilbo I hope Lorna I know you've been here that it has reiterated the things that will help you both and giving you a bit more comfort in terms of hearing his words again. I know when I do the session with the Guardian, sometimes it's kind of within 20 minutes, I can see that people look shocked and overwhelmed because it's just like, it's not what people expect, which is why I'm grateful that every, that people are letting me share them online so you can get an idea as to maybe what to experience. But every single cat is different. Every single soul is different. And I am so truly honoured that I have the capacity to connect with them and to share their wisdom and experiences with you. And I really hope you enjoy it, everyone. So 
I'm going to wrap up. The last thing to say is the Holistic Cat Conference is the 25th and 26th of February. If you haven't already booked your space, you must two day online free event to completely free. I'm going to be kicking it off with clarity on cat chakras. We've got magic of mushrooms, homeopathy, essential oils and cats, gut health, gut health and food therapy. Love the litter box, um, Chinese five element and what's Judy's, um, the key to kidney disease. So we are covering physical, emotional, mental and energetics for the conference. So it's two day event, UK times 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the Saturday and 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the Sunday. You can get the replays you, if you become a VIP. So the VIP option, which gives you loads. I mean, the VIP option, you get all the session replays for life. You get discount codes. So the speakers are giving discount codes for courses and communities and products. Um, there's also a VIP event, which is happening the Wednesday after the conference, which is a Q&A session with a selection of the speakers from the conference. So you get to submit a question and it's shared on, on a live event that you can join. So, you know, it's and also I'm I mean, I can't help it. I just give away my content. So uh, when you register as a VIP, you also get the um, obesity webinar from last year to watch as well. So you can register and have the free ticket. Absolutely. If you want to have everything to review and revisit and kind of get all the discount codes like who wouldn't want discount codes, sign up to be, be a VIP. Um, the links on Instagram are all in my bio. So head there and you should be able to register the, for the free ticket and get the VIP ticket. And for Facebook, I will find the links. So unorganized, find the links and pop them in the chat for you all so that you can um, take a look. OK, just going to check the comments before I go. Tanya says this has been really interesting. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. I feel like Lorna's message would have been spot on for me, too. And do you know what, my love? I think that's one of the reasons why I'm grateful that the Guardians are allowing me to share it because the messages from the cats, it's not just that moment in time a month or two ago. You know, it's not just for their Guardians. It is for all of us. There is wisdom in everything that they say. And if it doesn't resonate for us, it's not meant to, you know, but but when it does, it is it is beautiful. Tina says, thank you so much for this. They at these, they helped me a lot. Oh, you're welcome. This one I cried. Oh, my love. Hopefully soon I can get this done for my seven-year-old Puka. What a beautiful name. And my new boy Cosmos got from a shelter a month ago. I believe it would help them both so much as well as they need. Absolutely. Oh, much love to you too. Thank you very much. And I'm really grateful for everybody that's been here live with me. It's really lovely, lovely to be able to share the insights and yeah, I'll be doing it every week. So next week we have Erin and the beautiful, it's not Ivy, beautiful, Grace, goodness sake, Ivy, uh, Grace, no, Erin, oh, Ivy was last week, <laughs> Ivy was last week, I've got to post a picture of Ivy and the roses, which I haven't done. Next week will be Erin, which is the guardian and her beautiful girl, Grace. And Erin, as she said on Facebook, you start with expecting one thing and get something wildly different. So fascinating. Grace's session is, I find, I also found fascinating. So I can't wait to share how, you know, a visually impaired cat used colour to shift her energy and to show me what she needed. I will have my color cards, Erin, I hope you are using yours. And I will explain more about what, um, uh, uh, how Grace used them to shift her energy with me. So that'll be next week at eight o'clock. Hang on, let me just check it's not energy insights next week. No, Grace next week. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, everybody. So thank you everyone who's been here this evening. I'm thrilled that you've enjoyed them and thank you for commenting and being here with me live. And um, my sweet Jasper needs to be heard. Get in touch for sure. Oh, I'm glad you've got the cards, Erin. Brilliant. Lovely, lovely. So um, don't forget to book in for the conference. I'll pop the links in the Facebook chat. And I think that's everything for now, everybody. So thank you very much. Enjoy your afternoon and evening or the rest of your day. Look after yourselves and be kind to yourselves and enjoy your pussycats. Take care, everyone. Lots of love and I will see you soon. Bye for now.